play a game? Why, yes. I believe we shall. Oh, I got a live one here. <laughs> Live from Little Rock, it's Shane Plays Geek Talk, a journey into the things we love. I'm your host, Shane Sachs. Thanks so much for joining me. Whether you're listening live on, what is, is today the 7th, Zach? What is today? Yeah, July 7th at 1 p.m. Central on 101.1 FM, The Answer. Or if you're listening uh, via the live stream anywhere in the world at 101.1 FM, The Answer dot com. Or if you're listening, listening by podcast or Krypton Radio, I'm just really, really glad that you're here. Um, love love both live radio and podcasts and all that stuff. So uh, w- one of the reasons that I, that I like to do live radio is, one, I love the excitement and the, the danger zone, if you will, of live um, uh, radio that, I mean, things could go off of the cliff at any moment, <laughs> and that just adds a certain zing to it. You got you to gotta react in real time. But two, I like to keep it interactive. At uh, so you can call in at 501 823 0965. That's 501 823 0965, or you can tweet me at Shane Plays S H A N E P L A Y S. Uh, and so, uh, speaking of interactive, we've got uh, I believe on the phone right now, we've got uh, Mitch Brightweiser and Timothy Lim and Mark Pellegrini are going to be calling in here in a couple of minutes as soon as they can find a parking lot. So, Mitch, how's it going, man? Is he, is he there with me? I'm not. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, here. Dude. Here. <laughs> dude, Mitch Brightweiser. Hey, how are you? I'm, Congratulations I'm for. Zone? Is that what you're saying? What's that again? Yeah, you said that this is the danger zone. My live like, radio is me in trouble. Live li- in the air? Yeah, live. Well, it's more like me saying something that I have to frantically backpedal from as I as I look the abyss in the eye, or you have technical problems or something like that. And I just love that 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 you have to you have to stay on your toes. Well, man, uh, we'll get into the main update if you don't mind when when Mark can call in as well. But congratulations on blowing the the roof off the barn on your Indiegogo yes. for Red Rooster, man. Uh, uh, yes, uh, we are like the tornado yeah. uh, rolling into uh, the, comic, the comic book world. That is <laughs> that is fantastic. Blowing everybody away. Yeah, we're we're absolutely floored. Uh, the audience has materialized beneath our feet and they are going to catch us. We took a big risk. Uh, with our Indiegogo, Red Rooster Indiegogo campaign. And we have, this morning, uh, we've woken up to over 60,000, uh, hit our first stretch goal for the uh, the campaign. Wow. And uh, we've crossed 1,000, uh, we've blew past 1,000 backers. Wow. 1,000 people have jumped on board in two days. Wow. Uh, so we are absolutely ecstatic. Well, that that is great. I'll tell you what, I'll, now you've heard it, I think. I, I know I, I sent it to you, like you and Mark and, Edwin and all that, my little uh, Red Rooster announcement sound. I don't know if you've heard that yet or not, uh, but I'll as, as soon as Mark gets on, I'll, I'll play that. Uh, so he'll be that. That's what I'm going to play every Saturday uh, when I give the announcement <laughs> of of the Red Rooster news. So yeah, it looks like looks like Mark and Tim are calling in right now. So uh, glad that you guys glad everybody was able to to jump on for a couple of minutes. So you're and and Mitch, I know you're busy. Uh, I you are. You know, all of you guys are always welcome to stay as long as you want. But, you know, if you need to jump off pretty quick, I understand as well. I'm going to be talking about Steve Ditko today, obviously. Um, Mm -hmm. Massive, massive. That one hits me probably harder than Jack Kirby did because I I was probably aware of who Steve Ditko was before Jack Kirby, even though Jack Kirby was a, you know, a giant in the comics industry. Uh, But but anyway, I think we've got, do we have Mark and uh, Tim now? Yep, you got Mark and Tim. Yay, you guys are in the uh which are you in the uh in the Red Rooster Mobile or the Black Hops Mobile? Which car are you guys in today? We're in the Black Hops Mobile right now. We're Black Hops to do some Black Ops right now. All right, well let's do this. I've been waiting for everybody to get on. Folks, for the first time debuting live, here is the Red Rooster announcement promo sound that I'm going to play each Saturday as we update people on how Red Rooster the Golden Age Indiegogo is. <laughs> My fellow comics lovers, ask not what your rooster can do for you. Ask what you can do for your rooster. Hey, look at me when I'm talking, son. There you go, Mitch. Are you, are you speechless? <laughs> I have no word. I have no word. <laughs> 
Edwin hey, wants some cornflakes. <laughs> Edwin liked it. Edwin Boyette, the man with the best hair and the best voice on YouTube. My my goodness. Uh, uh, all right, so let's recap. Uh, now that Mark and Tim are on, uh, Red Rooster Indiegogo la- launched basically two days ago at, on July fifth with a an initial goal of fifteen thousand uh, dollars, and within a couple of hours. It blew through that, and what what what's your total now, Mitch? Uh, I think we're I think we've crossed sixty one thousand, or we we're very very close to over sixty one thousand and a, over a thousand backers. Uh, we blew right by that just a, a, a an hour or two ago. So wow, uh, it is rolling on today. Uh, having a very very good day, you know. Uh, I think, uh, yeah, yeah, people are. <laughs> I, I don't know, like I said, I have no words. Yeah, it's it's fantastic. I'm glad. You know, one of the reasons that one, I'll I'll tell you one of the reasons why I'm supporting you so strongly. One, I think Red Rooster is a cool concept. Like like some of the other Indiegogo stuff, like you know Jawbreakers and Cyberfrog. I, I'm encouraged to see the fans come out to support, uh, and I think it's cool. But Red Rooster personally resonates. I'm like that. That is that personally. Like I got to get on that. You know, it's it's a really neat character, mm-hmm. really neat concept. Uh, and I'm not denigrating the others; those are cool. But this one resonates w- with me even more personally. Two, uh, I can't. Because you were born in a barn, right? I was that's born that's in a correct. barn, and I like to crow. So uh, <laughs> whether it's deserved or not, uh, and I like to egg people on. But the other thing is, ever since that night a couple of years ago, when you put one piece of art on Twitter, and you and Elizabeth have been hounded and 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 treated so terribly and shabbily uh people were calling for elizabeth to be fired from her jobs even though she had nothing to do with it had said nothing uh and there was nothing wrong with what you said you were just expressing an opinion i've been wanting to hurt, help y'all so badly so uh when you bring both my my love of a cool project together with this makes me feel good to to be part of the hedge of protection around you man and to help you guys out I, I just feel amazing. So I'm so glad for all of you. Um, yeah. So, uh, and I've told you before and I'll tell you again, I, I'll help you pack that stuff out and mail it out and I, I'll, I won't charge you anything. I'll come over and help you guys pack that stuff out. All so, right. Slave labor. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I really, it's, it's, it's bothered me so badly how shabbily you were, you guys were treated and you're just nice people. Uh-huh. So, uh, well, yeah, you're welcome. All right, Mark, how does this make you feel as the writer? Um, well, I mean, obviously this is a, this is really big. And the, the great thing is that because we hit that 60 K stretch goal today, that means that the book is going to go from 48 pages to 60 pages. It's, Six. it's a full on graphic novella. So you're going to get the director's cut. Everybody who backs it is going to get the extended edition director's cut of uh, red rooster golden age. And it's going to tell the best story possible. That is fantastic. So there's even more barn to storm. We were storming yeah. more of the barn. So, uh, well, that's fantastic, guys. And and this the crazy thing is, you're only two days into it, and you're already three hundred something percent over your goal. I heard that. Um, I think it was that umbrella, the guy, or it might have been. Uh, was it Ben that you had on your thing a couple of days ago, Mitch? Uh, mm-hmm. From yeah, somebody was was estimating three hundred thousand. What do y'all have? Do you even want to even say anything like I that? Don't even, not like yeah. I tell, I'm telling people, I yeah. keep my expectations very right. low and my enthusiasm very very high. So, okay, uh, that's. <laughs> I think that's the best way to be. All right. Well, folks, Red Rooster, The Golden Age, Indiegogo, go check it out. And as Mitch has said, he's he's planning on at least, I think, quarterly Red Roosters moving forward. And you guys are going getting into exciting stuff like you've got some office space now. There's obviously some interesting things going on that I'm not even aware of, and I'm not trying to... I'm not trying to hint for a tease here. That's that's your business, but there's obviously cool things to come. So uh, I wanna I wanna give Tim a chance to mention Black Hops and Space Force. But before we do that, Mitch, Mark, is there anything else that you wanted to talk about on Red Rooster or like a cool reward level or anything like that? Uh, well, uh, if we've crossed our first uh, stretch goal, the sixty thousand dollars, so everybody is going to get twelve more pages, and so that's a given. So if you were on the fence before. Uh, pun intended. Yeah. Uh, then you can uh, cross uh, cross into greener pastures and go ahead and take the dive into uh, Red Rooster Golden Age and get that extra twelve pages on your book. If you back at the fifty dollar or above tier, you're going to be qualify for our next stretch goals, which uh, we're going to. I have another book called The Futurists, 
I have a super secret mystery artist, a mega ta- mega talent uh, in the mm. comic book world. Who started? Who, who started in project. 1981? That's our hint. Started he started in 1981. You can figure it out from there. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, so you can start trying to unravel the mystery. So uh, we hit that next stretch goal, which is probably going to be around uh, eighty or ninety thousand dollars. We're going to announce the artist. He is already working on a uh, cover poster image for us. Uh, so my plan is is we'll uh, try to include something in that when we hit that next stretch goal, like a poster or a print uh, or something with this uh, artist's cover art with the futurists on it. Uh, and I'm also doing some more Red Rooster art. I'm working on that today, and we might make this into a poster. Uh, uh, so that's you know that, that's going to be for backers at the fifty dollar tier. So if you're uh, again, uh, considering what tier to back, and you've got a little, maybe just a little extra money uh, 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 laying around your uh, <clears throat> your house or whatever, uh, or in your couches, then you might want to consider the fifty dollar tier and get this cool poster and participate in, in the cool stuff we have for the futurists that's coming up. Very cool. Uh, also, I want to, I'll, I'll, I'll kind of throw a uh, shout out there for if people, you know, uh, can if they have the you know extra cash the the order of the is it the order of the dawn at two hundred dollars where you get a pin and you get inducted in the order of the dawn is that yes yeah. you're, you're going to yeah. get a certificate you're going to be uh, we have started a secret society it is top secret so do not tell anybody you're not allowed to crow about word it about our secret society right uh, so uh, it, this is called the order of the dawn which is an actual thing within the book so you can you're going to be involved in this sort of meta experience. This is the two hundred dollar package. You'll get a certificate and a, a very nice die struck lapel pin, uh, so you can walk into all your executive boardroom meetings, and everyone <laughs> will know that you are a member of a super secret and special uh, poultry based society. Yeah, and uh, also you get your name mentioned in the back of the book as uh, as a special backer for nice. our Red Rooster Golden Age Indiegogo campaign. Nice. And if you're wearing that lapel pin and you recognize each other. You lean in and whisper in each other's ears, Cluck Hydra, right? Is that t- <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. I'll- See, live. Live radio. I can't take that back. All right, Mark, is there any, any reward level that you particular want to uh, pump there? Well, I think uh, Mitch covered the, the best ones. But uh, if you do get the, what is it, Mitch? Is the $50 package, you also get the sketchbook, right? Yeah. Uh, you do get a sketchbook, yeah, and a sketchbook yep. doesn't mean you get a bunch of blank pages. You get yeah, you a actually bunch get of drawings that are not going to be featured in the comic book itself. So you'll get some of the things from my sketchbooks and things I've never posted before, uh, some layouts and cover drawings, and nice. I might even have Mark uh, write up maybe the, uh, a little history or or maybe some do some uh, backstory for Red Rooster. Uh, so we'll load that sketchbook up with kind of extra materials. Nice. And it'll be signed yeah. as well. Everything's signed. Everything's signed by the whole creative team. Right. Uh, so you'll have a very, very special thing. Uh, you can, you know, uh, read one and then lock the other one in a safe because uh, we know it's going to be collectible and all that stuff, right? Right. All so, right. Uh, there yeah. you go. And so what's the lowest uh, backer level that somebody gets an actual print copy of the of the issue? At $25 plus shipping, you will get a 60-page graphic uh, novella, uh, which is will be signed by the entire creative team of myself, uh, scriptwriter Mark Pellegrini and my lovely and talented wife, colorist Elizabeth Brightweiser. Right, who's one of who is honestly one of the best colorists in the business. So, yeah, uh, she's home coloring Batman right now. So yeah, she's, she's a top top level talent. Fantastic. All right, so uh, guys, thanks so much uh, for. Re- I'm going to give Tim a chance to talk about Black Hops and Space Force, but as we as we end the Red Roaster discussion, I've got to have it again. Let's let's hear that again, Zach. <laughs> My fellow comics lovers, ask not what your rooster can do for you. Ask what you can do for your rooster. Hey, look at me when I'm talking, son. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure that's bringing tears to people's eyes. <laughs> I bet you there's a tear in Mitch's eyes right now. So, uh, always. <laughs> well, guys, uh, and as I said before, I'm going to be talking Steve Ditko today. Uh, tra- you know, terrible loss to the things that he contributed to mainstream comics, especially Marvel, are, are hard to put into words. Uh, I'm going to be talking about Batman 50, and I'm going to be talking about Bendis's Man of Steel. You know, after we're done talking about your projects, any of you are welcome to stick around, but I understand you're all busy, so if you need to drop, you know, no, no harm, no foul. Uh, Tim, what, <laughs> yeah, Tim, uh, yeah, well, that was a that was an unintentional pin or pun. You you said you needed to drop, Mitch. 
I do. I do. Okay. Thank you so much, Shane. Yeah, thanks for calling in, man. Keep go. Keep going. So, all right. So, Tim, tell us about Black Hops and Space Force, buddy. This is Timothy Lim, uh, who has been working with Mark Pellegrini and others to put out some really cool stuff lately, including uh, My Hero Magademia. So, give us an update, Tim. Yeah, My Hero Magademia is selling very well. We just entered into our fifth printing, and that's pretty cool considering that Mark and I have not had a fully illustrated book out until this year, so it's very exciting to see that. Black Hop 1 and 2, it's a two-part miniseries. Those come out sequentially uh, within the month of July, so Black Hop 1 will officially hit every comic store starting next Wednesday. People who pre-ordered actually got theirs this week, so we're already starting to see those come in. But just to give some listeners who are not familiar with the story, Black Hop is the story of the U.S. government's secret tactical rabbit that they used to send into uh, dangerous territory to take out some high-profile targets. And so even on its face, it sounds ridiculous. Um, if you think about it, you have a rabbit that's kind of an unassuming character because they're, they're tiny, they're cute, but it makes it for some very interesting situations when you know that that rabbit can sneak into places that others can't because they're so, um, they're, they're so unassuming. So this is the story of USAGI uh, sneaking into North Korea to help defuse a nuclear missile, essentially. So uh, issues one and two, issue one comes out next week. Issue two will come out at the end of July. Uh, We have a really big surprise for issue two as well that I can't really talk about on the air, but it it does tie into something that Mark and Mitch have been working on with uh, Red Rooster, and that's all that we can really say about it. Okay, cool. So, uh, and I want to, you know, I think I sent you guys this message, but a buddy of mine at work, Justin, uh, he already got his copy of Black Hops because I guess he he backed the project or I, I, he pre-ordered it or so he's already got his and he said that one of the things that struck him is it was really entertaining but it wasn't cheesy even though there's a rabbit in it so uh, that that was one of the things that struck him about it uh, and I wanted to uh, give Tim I want to give you the chance to confirm or deny is there an RPG in issue number one which would be a rabbit propelled grenade. There is. Okay. There's That's a rabbit. Say about it. <laughs> there's a rabbit propelled grenade, Zach. Zach looks happy in there about that. Okay. Uh, tell us about Space Force real quick, which which you've actually been working on since before Trump announced his Space Force. Well, we announced it when he hinted at it. So okay. He originally he originally announced it sometime in March, and immediately within less than thirty minutes, Chuck Dixon already had an idea percolating. And so, what is going to be exciting about Space Force, which actually debuts next week? is Trump Space Force is probably the largest gathering of conservative, of conservative artists on a single book. Um, we have Dave Dorman on covers. We have Chuck Dixon writing it. We have me on art. We have Brett Smith on colors. And we have Mark on postscript rewrites. So this, this might be the biggest team book that is out there right now. And the, 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 fun, the fun thing about it is that um, we are not showing any more promo art or the secrets that we have planned until the campaign launches because there's some major, major, major things associated with it that we can't talk about right now, not until uh, people see it. So people, I think, are going to be very shocked when, uh, when we actually debut it next week. Fantastic. Okay, well, cool, man. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to my copy of Black Ops. Like I told you, I got confused, and I, I tried to pick mine up this week, and, and they were like, no, no, it's, it's next week, sir. So... Um, now, uh, is Space Force, is that going to be through Antarctic Press, or is that going to be Indiegogo, or, or how, do you, how is that going to be done? It's going to be through Indiegogo. Uh, okay. Chuck is actually, because he's the, he's, he's the actual spearheader of the project, and I'm basically just running the social media operations for it. I actually don't know who the publisher is is um chuck dixon will be the one to kind of tell people right. I, I know that he's i know he's in talks with at least three of them three publishers who are interested so i can't actually make a definitive statement on okay. that but uh, i do know that indiegogo is definitely where we are going to launch okay and i'm not saying that it will be done through cautionary comics but i know that chuck has been doing some work with cautionary comics and i'm only bringing that up to help promote his ravage uh project he has going on with them right now so uh all right guys i've got to i got to get us towards a break uh when i come back from the break i'm gonna be talking about steve ditko i know you guys are busy if y'all want to stick around you can if you need to go totally understand and i'm so happy for all of you including mitch who you know had to drop he's i can't even imagine how busy he is right now so glad for all of you and all and how how things are going and all the exciting things you're doing for comics right now 
Absolutely. Thank you very much. We're going to actually head out as well, but okay. have a good day, and we'll look forward to hearing the rest of your podcast. Fantastic. Okay, guys, take care. Uh, and I'm going to throw out a couple of show notes there, and then um, we'll we'll get to a break. That was Mitch Breitweiser, Mark Pellegrini, and Timothy Lim, uh, who are all very cool uh, comics creators who are, who are just trying to do fun stuff right now uh, in different venues. Uh, you know, because let's be honest, uh, comics has been kind of crazy the past couple of years. So they're just trying to do some fun stuff. And it doesn't hurt that they're all darn nice people to boot, including if you ever get a chance to meet uh, Elizabeth Breitweiser, who Mitch does a lot more of the, the public stuff. But Elizabeth is very nice, uh, extremely talented. So I'm glad for all of them. Okay, I'm going to throw some show notes out. We get back, we're going to be talking about Steve Ditko, who was uh, without Steve Ditko. I, it's not a... Uh, I'm not exaggerating to say that Marvel Comics probably wouldn't have been what Marvel Comics is, and mainstream comics would be a little bit different without Steve Ditko. So, again, this is live radio. You can call in at 501-823-0965, or you can tweet me at Shane Plays. Uh, show notes uh, will, for this show will be up uh, for the podcast and Krypton radio version at ShanePlays.com. Last week's show was Galactic Scoundrels and Little Rock Games, and that's where we had... Um, uh, there's actually... Little Rock Games, which is a game company right here in Little Rock, is is kickstarting a very cool card slash dice slash storytelling game called Galactic Scoundrels. Go check that out. The show does go out as a podcast on the blog, uh, iTunes, Google Play Music, Stitcher, SoundCloud, you, SoundCloud, SoundCloud, YouTube. See, there you go, Mitch, if you happen to listen to this live radio, baby. SoundCloud. SoundCluck. There you go. In honor of Red Rooster, SoundCluck, SoundCloud, YouTube, and more. Also, Shane Plays is also carried on Krypton Radio. Krypton Radio is sci-fi for your Wi-Fi. KryptonRadio.com. Uh, a couple of things here real quick. Shane Plays sponsor Arkansas RPG Con 2018 badge sales are now open. Vendor and sponsorship options are also open. Go to ARPGCon.com for more info and make sure to follow a Arkansas RPG Con on facebook and last zach i got a banter with you or sal's grandmother and her dog muffin are gonna get upset with me you told me before the show that you saw ant-man and the wasp thursday night i did did you like it it was a great movie okay i saw a blurb that said funniest marvel movie yet would you agree with that close maybe maybe Thor was funny yes it was Thor ragnarok was funny plus you got the gardens of the galaxy movies as well yeah Mm -hmm. yeah yeah so it's up there huh okay well but it was good Oh, it was great. And you didn't feel like, man, I just saw Infinity War. Here's another Marvel movie. You didn't have any... any... I like to isolate my films. You isolate your films. Mm -hmm. All right. Have you seen The Incredibles 2 yet? Going today. I went and saw it last Saturday with my wife and son, and I loved it a lot. Cool. And Incredibles is my favorite Pixar movie, Mm -hmm. and I thought they did a fantastic job with the sequel. Okay. Really good. In some ways, I may have even liked it more than the first one. In some ways. Mm -hmm. So, And then, of course, I went back and watched the first Incredibles again You know, this week, and it it just holds up so well. I love that movie. Such a great movie. All right. I got to get us to a break. Uh, when we come back, we're going to be talking about giant talent, comics talent. Steve Ditko has passed away. Comic book lovers, visit the wildstars.com today. From the mind of author and comic book industry expert Michael Tierney, it's not just a comic book, it's a comic book novel. The Wild Stars is sci-fi and so much more. Learn the explanations behind UFOs and space gods. This isn't the Twilight Zone. This is the region of the Milky Way galaxy known as the Wild Stars. We guarantee you've never read anything like it. The complete comic book novel took 20 years to tell. With one reviewer noting, the story of the Wild Stars stretches ambitiously across space and time. From small town murders to the destruction of planets, with every event given multiple layers of meaning. If you haven't read The Wild Stars, you're missing out. Visit thewildstars.com today. The Die is Cast. Plunge into worlds of fantastic adventure, where dragons lie, and the undead stalk the shades of your mind's imagines. Where creatures of legend plunder wealth through the horror of their passage. Monsters grim and foul hold the ecstasy of gold and the renown of glory. 
All this and more awaits you and your friends in the unlimited, fantastic world of the Castles and Crusades role-playing game from Troll Lord Games. Visit your friendly local game store or trolllord.com to get your copy today. A rules-light, adaptable game that has stood the test of time. Twelve years in constant publication with no new additions, Castles and Crusades is the original easy-to-play attribute check system. Join us and unleash your imagination. Visit your friendly local game store or trolllord.com to get your copy of castles and crusades today shame plays radio is blessed to have sponsors and we appreciate them very much however did you know that you can also support the show as an individual for as little as one dollar an episode simply go to patreon.com slash shame plays hey welcome back to shame plays geek talk a journey and the things we love, I'm your host, Shane Stacks. If you're listening live uh, on Saturday, July 7th, the call-in number is 501-823-0965. Or you can tweet me at Shane Plays, and I'll try to work all that into the show. We just, uh, before the break, we had a uh, good conversation with comic creators, uh, Mitch Breitweiser, Mark Pellegrini, and uh, Timothy Lim uh, talking about uh, Mitch and Mark's Red Rooster project uh, on Indiegogo right now, which is blowing the doors off. At just a t- couple days into the crowdfunding, it's already at three hundred and something fifty percent, something like that, more than they expected. They asked for fifteen thousand; they're already at sixty thousand and more. Climbing like twenty eight days left in this thing, it's gonna it's gonna go crazy. It's already going crazy. And then um, we also talked with Timothy Lim, Black Hops. Him and Mark Pellegrini worked together on Black Hops. Uh, and that's coming out uh, the first issue next week, and then I think the, the second issue two weeks after that. It's a two-issue series. And then next week, uh, the project that Timothy is working on with uh, uh, Chuck Dixon called Space Force, which is they've actually been working on for quite a while, uh, I guess we'll announce next week for Indiegogo. So there we go. Um, all right, so now I want to talk about Steve Ditko. I basically had a different show lined up for today, and then... Yesterday, about six or seven o'clock, somewhere around in there, uh, I got a message and it was from my friend William Burkeen, who you've heard on the show more than once. Good friend of mine, good geek as well. And it simply said, with no link, no, no, it just said, Steve Ditko is dead. And there's nothing else that need to be said. I immediately felt a little bit of the ground fall away from under me. I never met Steve Ditko personally. In fact, he's famously uh, somewhat reclusive when it comes to interviews and things like that. Some people have compared him to J.D. Salinger. Uh, If you don't know J.D. Salinger, he wrote an incredibly famous book and then just kind of disappeared from view and didn't do interviews and that sort of thing. So if you don't know, Steve Ditko... Is what is who's he's he's what I call one of the three pillars of Marvel Comics, of early Marvel Comics. I I genuinely don't think that you would have Marvel Comics without Steve Ditko. It wouldn't be the Marvel Comics that we know that it is today. And Spider Man, who is a huge part of Marvel Comics, would not be who he is. The character would not be Spider-Man without Steve Ditko. Now, in the early days, you had Stanley. I'm going to say these were the people like to talk about Trinities. You got the Trinity of DC Comics, and you got the Trinity of Marvel, which I think they're kind of forcing it with uh, Thor and uh, Captain America and Iron Man being the Trinity of Marvel, but that's the narrative they're pushing right now for marketing or whatever, whatever. But you had you had Stan Lee, you had Jack Kirby, and you had Steve Ditko. And those three together exploded onto the scene in the early 60s and changed mainstream comic books forever. It's, it's hard to understand, even me doing the research, and as much comic books as I've read and as much comic books history as I've read, uh, and going back and reading those old comics and comparing them to now and, and comics that came before and just talking to my comics friends, it's hard for me to truly get it since I wasn't there. I was born in 1972. I wasn't there when it all broke out. 
But when when Marvel Comics, as we understand Marvel Comics, in the early 60s, because there was timely comics and all this other stuff, but when Marvel Comics, as we understand it, exploded onto the scene, what it was doing was so fresh and so different, nobody had seen anything like it in mainstream comics. Before then, superheroes didn't really have problems. I mean, you might have had you might have troubling origins like Batman's parents were killed or something like that, but they didn't have like real problems. They, you know, the the only problems they had were the villains they faced. They didn't have like problems really in their normal lives. Now they may have like you know like Superman was like oh what do I do about lawyers Lois Lane or I love Lori Lamaris or Lana you know Lana Ling. I mean that kind of stuff. But it wasn't the angsty like real problems. Super teams didn't really fight amongst themselves. All this stuff. But I mean you had Spider Man that came along. He was bullied. He was a wimp. You really if you read that first issue he at times he's he himself was kind of a jerk. It's like I'll show them with my power and, and all this stuff and. uh you know, Spider-Man, when he became Spider-Man, his first thought was not to go be a hero. Before then, usually if somebody got superpowers, they immediately threw on a costume and went and fought crime. No, he, he, he wanted to go make money. He wanted to figure out how to make a buck off of this. And then through tragic circumstances, he realized with great power must come great responsibility, which I'm sure for Stan Lee was a throwaway line, but it's become, you know, a not just a comic book thing but like a cultural almost like proverb but anyway back to back to steve ditko you know he 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 was the artist on uh spider-man he helped co-create spider-man he uh he he helped co-create dr strange and the the way he drew the trippy uh, visuals and Doctor Strange just was just crazy, and it, you know everybody everybody went nuts over it. And the college students assumed that everybody at Marvel was on drugs, even though they weren't. It just you know it was just really crazy stuff going on. And and he let me see uh, I'm going to Wikipedia and, and see his bibliography. I know he drew the first thirty or forty issues of Spider Man and, and worked on some other stuff. And then, for whatever reason, and nobody really knows what the thing is, and, and then um, they evidently patch things up somewhat later, but but Stan Lee and, and, and Steve Ditko, for some reason, had a falling out. And Steve, get, Steve Ditko split. And nobody really knows what it was about. And the, and the things that have been said, what, what it was about, you know, a lot of people... Ditko himself have said no that's that's not what it was about but they're you know they're just for whatever reason you know not talking about it or the real story has never come out and at this point it doesn't really matter he left he did a little work with DC he did some work of his own he did work with Charleston then he came back and did some work for Marvel and then in recent years he's been doing some like some of his own stuff with a guy named Robin Snyder but if you haven't heard yesterday uh, the news broke that, um, and this is according to the Hollywood Reporter, I guess, did the first breaking of the news. He was found dead in his Manhattan studio on June 29th and, and very sadly was believed to have died two days prior to this discovery. So even though the news broke yesterday, he's been gone, um, you know, for over a week. And I guess he, he was 90 and he spent a lot of time in his uh, in his own studio uh, with very few visitors. Um, you know, he let certain people in, but he was kind of a kind of a private person. In fact, uh, he had uh, a lot of you know interview requests. He said no. I, he goes. Um, his response was, "I want I want to give you my work, not my personality." So he didn't feel that it should be. Um, that it would be he, he didn't want it to be about him he wanted to be a, he, to be about his work so here's a, a selected bibliography of his from um, Wikipedia he did amazing adventures um, number 15 which is of course the first spider-man uh, he inked Jack Kirby in the Credible Hulk number two he did the amazing spider-man number one through 38 I'd also like to say my favorite 
Spider-Man comic of all time, I believe, is Amazing Spider-Man number 33, and that's where Spider-Man's trapped under, under all the steel and concrete, and he ha- and he's, he give, he's wants to give up, but then he finds the inner resolve to escape, and that's just my favorite Spider-Man issue of all time. I also love the first Amazing Spider-Man annual. I tweeted about that last night, where, one, it's a fascinating look into early Marvel where it's like they're trying to track Spider, like J. Jonah Jameson is trying to track Spider-Man down, and and he's calling the Fantastic Four and the Avengers, and Fantastic Four are like, we don't know how to get a hold of him, and and uh, Captain America is like, I've I've never even met the guy, you know. So it's it's kind of a fantastic, uh, no pun intended, insight, and and it has these amazing one-page splash panels as as Spider-Man is fighting each member of the uh, is it the Sinister Six? It's the first time that all of his his main villains gang up on him. Uh, but yeah, he did. Um, he inked fan, uh, Jack Kirby in Fantastic Four uh, and the Incredible Hulk. Uh, he created Speedball. I remember when he created Speedball in the late 80s, who of course went on to be Penance, which that was so dumb. I, it, I don't even want to go into that. I, I thought the Civil War s- storyline was pretty good, but having Speedball turn into Penance, I, I I'm, I'm, I'm not even going there. All right, DC Comics, he worked on. He, he, he worked on be, uh, The Creeper, The Hawk and, Hawk and Dove. I'll go here in a second. Some of the characters are created. Shade the Changing Man. Um, worked on a lot of really cool stuff. He, he worked on Charlton Comics with Captain Adam, Blue Beetle, uh, and others. And, and, then, and he created this, this really interesting character called Mr. A that I would love. Oh, yeah. He, 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 I think, yeah, he created the question, if I remember correctly. Love the question. The question is one. The question of Rorschach, who is based on, um, who is Rorschach is based on the question. Those are two of my favorite comic book characters ever. So, and, and as I was talking about last night, uh, Doctor Manhattan is based on Captain America, or not Captain America, Captain Adam, and Night Owl too is based on Blue Beetle. And then uh, Rorschach is based on the question. And all three of those characters they're based on were. Steve Ditko work. So as much as I love Alan Moore, he didn't just poop it out whole. He was working on other people's work. So this will just show you kind of some of the influence that, uh, you know, he co-created, not just came up with the visual style of Spider-Man, but I think if I remember right, uh, Jack Kirby took the first run at creating Spider-Man and it was a completely different concept, like with this kid with a spider gun or something like that. Whole, totally different concept. And then Steve Ditko came along and, and we got the Spider-Man that we know today. And it's, you know, Spider-Man is, I would say these days, Spider-Man's almost up there with Superman and influence in pop culture around the world. So that's huge. Wish I had more time to go into it. Uh, so I'm going to give some, uh, some tributes to Steve Ditko uh, that have come across Twitter last night. Zach, I did see that thing that you sent me today on on. on messages i appreciate that i'd already found that but i do appreciate you sending that to me so marvel entertainment yeah we have steve ditko november 2nd 1927 through approximately june 27th 2018 only because we're not exactly sure but it was that week sometime age 90 marvel entertainment said today the marvel family mourns the loss of steve ditko steve transformed the industry in the marvel universe and his legacy will never be forgotten our thoughts are with his family loved ones and fans during this sad time Tom King, who's an amazing writer, is currently writing uh, Mr. Miracle and Batman, did a fantastic job of vision, said, uh, rest in peace to Steve Ditko. His art was sublime. And then Tom said he apologized to Dave Gibbons once for stealing his nine panel grid all the time. And Gibbons told me not to worry. He stole it for Di- from Ditko. And then uh, Tom said, we stand on the shoulders of giants. Uh, Pat Patrick Zerker, Zercher, um, Said Steve Ditko passed away. Comics are unimaginable without his influence. He co-created Spider-Man, which will be remembered as significant as Doyle creating Sherlock Holmes or Fleming creating James Bond. Spider-Man may outlast them both. All right. Matthew Rosenberg, who's a fantastic writer. He's currently writing um, New Mutants, Dead Souls, uh, Punisher, and he just took over Astonishing X-Men. He said, I owe Steve Ditko a huge debt. He helped create a world and filled it with a weird, with weird, oddball, and very human characters that have been with me my whole life. They helped me learn to read as a kid, helped me survive as a teen, and I'm honored to still live in the world today. Critical Blast tweeted out. Um, I don't know if this was R.J. Reynolds or not, who's the uh, 
right, current writer of the Destroyer novels, but uh, I know he does stuff for Critical Blast. So anyway, he said, today is a little less remarkable as we mourn the passing of Steve Ditko, who brought us such iconic and enduring characters like Spider-Man, Doctor Strange, and The Question. I've already said that it's safe to say, and these are my own things I'm going to say now, it's safe to say that without Steve Ditko, the Marvel Age of Comic Books as we understood it would not have happened. The three pillars were Stan Lee, Jack Kirby, and Steve Ditko. And uh, here's some other stuff I tweeted out last night. Steve Ditko co-created or created Spider-Man, Doctor Strange, Speedball, The Question, The Creeper, Blue Teetle, Blue Teetle, Blue Beetle, the Ted Cord version, Captain Adam, Hawk and Dove, Shade the Changing Man, Mr. A, and more. Profound influence on mainstream comic books. Uh, Steve Ditko has been quoted as saying his creation, The Question, is a comics code acceptable version of Mr. A. Ditko also supposedly described Rorschach as being like Mr. A, except it's insane, which is interesting because Rorschach, as I've already said, is based on the question. Um, already talked about Steve Ditko's influence on The Watchmen. And then there's a, I'm, I'm really ridiculously intrigued um, that the, he, he created this character named Mr. A I heard about years back, and I keep meaning to track some of this work down. I'm, I'm going to make an extra effort now. It's this vigilante, kind of a question-like vigilante that reflects Ayn Rand's philosophy of, of objectivism, and he sees everything in black and white with no gray ever. Uh, and ever since I first heard about it. So, and then as I said, he's declined most interviews over the decade, decade, stating he wants it to be about his work, not his personality. And then here's some further statements from uh, Marvel Comics. Now, the, the statement I read earlier at the beginning of the tributes was from Marvel Entertainment President Dan Bunkley. Uh, Marvel Chief Creative Officer Joe Quesada says only a small group of individuals can claim that they've affected and re redefined not just an industry, but popular culture worldwide. Steve Ditko was one of those few who dared to break molds every time his pencil and pen hit a blank sheet of paper. In his lifetime, he blessed us with gorgeous art, fantastical stories, heroic characters, and a mystical persona worthy of some of his greatest creations. And much like his greatest co-creation, -cre Steve Ditko's legend and influence will outlive us all. Uh, Marvel Editor-in-Chief C.B. Sobolski said, It's impossible to put into words the impact that Steve Ditko has not, had, not just on, had not just on comics, but on modern pop culture. With ink and imagination, he thrilled readers with amazing and awe-inspiring adventures. Ditko, Ditko didn't just create characters, he built worlds. But today it is our world that is saddened by his loss. While he may no longer walk this mortal plane, Steve's legacy will continue to endlessly inspire us all. And then um, we have a uh, Marvel executive editor, Spider-Man office and VP of digital content, uh, digital publishing, Nick Lowe said, Steve Ditko's hands and soul are all over the best character in all of fiction. He was a pillar of the House of Ideas who not only co-created Spider-Man and Doctor Strange, but uh, many of the best villains in comic book history. Steve was the first to make Marvel truly weird. Um, and he's, for that, he's we're forever grateful. So I believe that it cuts offices for that. We are forever, but I'm pretty sure he said grateful there. So there's Steve Ditko. Uh, so much more I could say, but for time reasons, I've got to got to cut it short. Uh, I got... You know, just, it, 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 you know, it's hard to, it's hard to uh, uh, overstate, uh, you know, his influence. Even though he, he was very involved for three or four years, dropped out, went over to D.C., Carlton, Charlton, came back to Marvel in later years. His influence is profound. There's, there's people that work in this industry for 20, 30, 40 years and may not or and won't have the same influence he did. So, uh, and I just, you know, C.B. Sobolski, the, the current Marvel editor-in-chief, you know, said good things about Steve Ditko. I, I can't help but wonder, you know, uh, Axel Alonso, who was the previous editor-in-chief, has been quoted as saying that, you know, up until basically he came along in, in the recent Marvel stuff, that comics was just a hobby for old white guys. Well, that hobby sure did have a profound influence on a lot of people. That's all I want to say on that. Um, and, uh, so, you know, Axel, I, as I said before, I, I wish you well in your personal life, but I'm glad you're not in Marvel comics anymore. Thing, the things are turning around there and getting better, but let's keep this positive about Steve Ditko. Steve, uh, you know, we'll miss you. Uh, thanks. You thank you so much for what you did for the, for the hobby in the industry that I love. Um, and 
you know, I just want to, I want to, even though, you know, we had a moment of silence last week for Harlan Ellison. I'm going to do the one this again this week, but even though it's a no, no, we're going to have a moment of silence for Steve Ditko. All right. And that was the moment of silence for Steve Ditko, one of the pillars, three pillars of early Marvel co-creator of Spider-Man, Dr. Strange, and, uh, many other characters in his own personal creation that he seemed to love very much. Uh, Mr. A and one of my favorite characters of all time, the question we'll be back here in a moment on Shane plays geek talk. Welcome back to Shane plays geek talk, a journey into the things we love. The, before the break, we were giving a tribute to Steve Ditko, one of the giants in the comic book industry. Yeah. We learned yeah, the news broke yesterday that he is now gone at the age of 90 co-creator of Spider-Man um, Doctor Strange, he revamped Blue Beetle into the Ted Cord version, created the question, revamped Captain Adam, did Hawk and Dove, created the Creeper, uh, his own uh, creation, Mr. A, so much, so much. Uh, we, we literally would not have Spider-Man and Doctor Strange and, and others, and Marvel would not be what it is, and comics would not be what they are without Steve Ditko. All right, I'm going to talk here in a second about Batman 50, the wedding issue, and then the Man of Steel uh, series, mini series that just ended by Brian Bendis, Brian Michael Bendis, but I forgot uh, before the break to give some love to an ad or an ad to a sponsor, an ad for a sponsor. Some goblins are your friends. Game Goblins is Central Arkansas's premier retailer of Magic the Gathering, Warhammer 40K, board games, card games, RPGs, miniatures, and hobby accessories. Call Game Goblins at 501 224 Game or visit them online at gamegoblins.com. They're conveniently located. At 1121 South Bowman, right on the corner of Bowman and, Bowman and Canis in West Little Rock. That's right by Tropical Smoothie and Subway and uh, Senior Tequila. And there's an ATA Karate place there, that little strip. Uh, for all your gaming needs, I heartily recommend Game Goblins. they got plenty of spe- uh, room for play space, lots of inventory, and there's events there every day of the week. Make sure to check out their customer loyalty program that rewards you based on your actual purchases. Game Goblins earns your business and keeps it. First time customers mention Shane Plays and receive $10 off your purchase of $50 or more. Tell them Shane Plays sent you. You felt like going to a break right then, didn't you, Zach? Because that's usually what I say right before we go to our second break. You right. did, admit it. I felt like going to a break. Felt like we should be. Okay, we got, we got uh, ooh, six minutes here, so I got to do this quick. Um, so Tom King has been writing Batman and it's been phenomenal. I don't agree with everything he does with the character of Batman, but his story arcs are great. His writing is phenomenal. Uh, and there's been this huge buildup to the anniversary issue, Batman number 50 since rebirth. It's the 50th in, uh, issue since rebirth. They've been leading up to the Batman and Catwoman are getting married and they, they, they all this huge marketing, all this big push, the wedding is coming. They've had all this this wedding build up. They've had all these one shots called Prelude to the Wedding with the various bat characters in the bat family encountering villains related to the wedding story arc. And then you had the Joker wanting to be invited and doing all crazy stuff. The point is DC has been saying for months now that that Batman and Catwoman are getting married in, in uh, issue number 50, and it's specifically Batman and Catwoman getting married, not Bruce Wayne and Selena Kyle because of secret identities, which begs the question legally how to, but it's a comic book. I'm okay with it, all right? They're getting married. So everybody's been like, oh, great. And now there was a, a debacle, which I'm not going to get into, uh, that uh, DC Comics along with New York Times spilled the beans last weekend, a few days before the issue came out, and because of the spoiling and because of what happens in the issue, you've had people canceling their pre-orders of this uh, and, and dropping Batman and all this. So I'm not going to go there, okay? I'm just going to talk about this issue itself. Uh, and first of all, I want to say that Tom King's a great writer, and you know I, I would urge people to, to stick with it, okay? I, I would say that all the marketing and brouhaha and all that's probably more on DC than Tom King. But anyway, do what you got to do. Uh what, what I basically said on Twitter yesterday after reading this is, as a tribute, it's an oversized issue uh, that, it, it, and, and it's, so it's oversized, exercise anniversary issue, 
Uh, and it's got a lot of splash panels from all these different artists that honor the different eras of Batman and Catwoman, visual styles, their history, and with little notes over the top as as Batman and 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 uh, Catwoman are writing a letter to each other, which you find out at the end. There's spoilers. This is spoilers, folks. Uh, as a tribute to Batman and Catwoman and their history and the different eras of Batman, it's fantastic. As a wedding issue that's been built up to for probably close to a year now, half a year, it's absolute garbage. It is a terrible payoff for all the anticipation that's been built up. As has already been spoiled by uh, DC Comics itself and the New York Times, they do not get married. Uh, the uh, Catwoman decides that if, if Batman is happy, then he will not be Batman and then the world will be a worse place. And the world needs Batman. So she decides not to marry him. She says, that's my sacrifice as a hero because she loves him. That's how it ends. Uh, after all the buildup, garbage. Like I said, it's a great tribute to Batman and Catwoman. But as a payoff to that story that's been building up, garbage. So that, it, But it's, it's drawn well. It's written well. Uh, there's some redeeming stuff, and it ends. I'm not going to spoil the cliffhanger if you haven't seen it yet, but it ends on a very interesting cliffhanger. And 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 Tom King himself has said this is only the first 50 issues. There's another 50 to come, so he's setting something up. But I do think that it was a switcheroo, and it was a it was a rude thing to do to the fans. Okay, That's, I just got one question. Yeah, did she have any reservations on the way towards their wedding? Only because of that. Oh, okay. So she was complete. She was, she was all in, and then and then it occurs to her somebody says something, and a remark that's made gets her thinking. And the Joker said something. Okay. A couple of issues back that I think kind of messed with her head too. Okay, I got to move on to Man of Steel by Brian Bendis. I got two minutes here. We're not going to do a bad joke of the week this week to honor uh, Steve Ditko. The six issue weekly series of Man of Steel by Brian Bendis just ended. I have to say I liked it a lot more than I thought I would. I've been saying that Superman and action comics have been really strong lately. So if you're going to bring in Brian Michael Bendis to quote unquote save Superman, this is the worst time to do it. But that's what he wanted. So they gave it to him. I did like this six issue series. Uh, he basically gets rid of this, the bottled city of Candor, which has been in the mythos, Superman mythos forever. And he gets... Lois Lane and his son John out of the way for an undetermined period of time. Doesn't kill them off, just gets them out of the way in a, in a story reason that makes sense somewhat. So it almost feels like, you know, because when John Byrne did his Man of Series, I got one minute left here, uh, back in the 80s, he got to completely redo Superman because the crisis on Infinite Earths had just happened. So Bendis, I felt like, was resetting Without being able to reboot Superman, he wanted to clear some stuff out of the way and tell his own stories. Uh, and that, that's kind of what I feel he did. He did introduce an element I don't like. He introduced a villain that is responsible for blowing up Krypton. I don't like that. Just leak. Krypton blew up because of it blew up and then S Superman came to Earth. Leave that alone. Don't go back and fiddle with that. I, I don't like that. But I will say this was fantastic storytelling. I enjoyed it. It's, it's been the first time in a while that I wanted to get to the comic book store today because I'm going to read that issue today. And it's been a long time since I felt that way. Got about 30 seconds. I'm not saying it was perfect, but I did enjoy it very much. And I'm looking forward to what they're doing coming up. Folks, that's it for this week on Shane Plays Geek Talk. We will catch you next time and uh, have a great week until then. Comics legend Alan Moore on Steve Ditko. And I remember when I did that Steve Ditko program with Jonathan Ross, where um, Stan Lee will not say, yes, Steve Ditko created Spider Man. He will say, in my opinion, Steve Ditko created Spider Man. But he won't say, yeah, actually, Steve Ditko did create Spider-Man. He won't say that. Probably on advice from lawyers. And uh, Jonathan Ross had got him over to to come over to do the recording. And Stanley was going to be bringing his lawyer with him. 
but his lawyer got stuck in traffic. <laughs> and Jonathan Ross said, oh, we're, we're in a bit of a hurry. Or perhaps he said, oh, we, I don't know. <laughs> so, so eventually Stanley said, oh, well, we can, we can do the interview. I trust you. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so Jonathan Ross got him. He, he, it was like the Jeremy Paxman moment when he was interviewing Michael Howard on Newsnight. He was saying, so, Stanley, is Steve Ditko the creator of Spider-Man? And Stanley was squirming and saying, well, in my opinion, um, Steve Ditko was the creator of Spider-Man. He said, yeah, that's not what I asked. Your opinion doesn't actually matter for anything. It's not official, is it? Was Steve Ditko the creator of Spider-Man? Um, about three times. He said, well, in my opinion, um, Steve Ditko is the creator of Spider-Man. You know. Steve Ditko was, during Spider-Man's, I think, 30th anniversary year, uh, Steve Ditko was living in reduced circumstances. All these people, they had their work stopped on from. Um, I don't want to end this on a particular bitter note, but sort of, you did ask. So, no, not a huge fan of Stan Lee. Um, huge fan of a lot of the people that he worked with. Shane Plays Radio is blessed to have sponsors, and we appreciate them very much. However, did you know that you can also support the show as an individual for as little as $1 an episode? Simply go to patreon.com slash Shane Plays.